as we looked at in the first hour and throughout the course of the day. It is Holocaust Memorial Day, and in accord with that, welcoming to the studio Israel's ambassador to the United Kingdom, Ambassador Zibi Hotovile. And it's good to see you. We met briefly, I think, at some social events. So good to see you, Ambassador. Thank you for coming in. Um, today is without doubt a day of reflection and remembrance. When it comes round, I will never forget the first time I went to Auschwitz and I was privileged to take a survivor and his granddaughter. So she saw it for the first time through her grandfather's eyes. That is the memory I will always have of the Holocaust, that extraordinary trip. For you, what is a sort of personal memory or recollection that goes through your mind this morning? Uh, first of all, I definitely agree that the Auschwitz um, visit that I had in my high school years was definitely something I will never forget because, as you said, the presence of survivors with the group of students that can actually see that the reality is now reflected through the eyes of a survivor. This is something that was part of my, when I was 16, this is when I was for the first time in Poland. And for us as a family, it's a very significant day to remember the grandfather of my husband, Samuel Freiberg. Say, I'm sorry, I thought there might be personal, yeah, yeah. I think every Jew around the world has some kind of a personal um, memory at this day. And when I was a parliament member for many years, this was a day when we we used to just mention the names, first of all. Oh. And, and I think just by repeating the names, it's giving a human face to the six million. The number is something you can't affiliate with, but a personal story, something you can affiliate with. And Samuel Freiberg, the grandfather of my son, uh, survived the camps. He was he was an Auschwitz survivor and also Dachau survivor. Right. And when he arrived to Israel, he had to fight in our independence war. So in 1948, coming as a refugee from the Holocaust, he came to Israel and he started fighting for the right of the Jews to have a Jewish state. And one of the most, uh, I would say, special moments in my husband's life was the fact he was fighting as, as a soldier, as an Israeli soldier, in the same unit that his grandfather um, was fighting the, the Golani Brigade. And, and it was for him like a closure of a circle, a family circle, that the Jews will never uh, be left without the power to protect themselves. What, as a, a, a schoolgirl, as a young girl, what is your most vivid memory of going to the camp? I think the shoes in yeah. Auschwitz, I, I must say. It's still, it's still the most... Uh, so just to explain, listeners, it's almost like a museum exhibit <clears throat> and the shoes are piled up behind, as I recall, a glass screen, isn't yes. it? A, a, a massive part. Ambassador, that's what sticks in your mind. I think the, the fact that when you, when you are a teenager, and may, maybe this is my, my main message here, it's very difficult to understand what happened because it's so horrific and, and the tragedy, the human tragedy is so big that you can't believe that people, human beings, did yes. this horrible crime and, and for innocent people just because they were Jews. And, and one of the things you, you realize that there was a whole machine that worked um, uh, on getting everything documented the, the this this horrific yes. moments and and uh, I think it's very difficult to to understand it when you're at that age. In the previous hour, I was speaking to Sir Lloyd Dorfman, who's a business businessman, entrepreneur, and philanthropist, and who is, of course, as you will know, working behind trying to get the Holocaust Memorial here in in Westminster. And there have been some objections. Now, I appreciate you might not want to talk about objections because you, you might be prejudiced from your position as ambassador. But putting some kind of education centre, some kind of memorial to the Holocaust in Great Britain, while there are still survivors able to see it. Ambassador, how important is that? Nothing is more important than that, because I think those years, those precious years that we still can hear um, from first hand, the witnesses are still alive, still with us. Uh, those are the days when we, we need to dedicate uh, building the next stage of educational projects for the generation that won't have the survivors. And uh, I just, I just mentioned today the Spielberg project, the fact that uh, Steven Spielberg devoted um, many years from his life to uh, make the witnesses accessible to everyone. And the fact that Yad Vashem in Israel, the center of, of, of the memory, filmed thousands of people that came to give a testimony. Because those kind of things, I think, we, we will learn to appreciate how much it's important to um, give young people that are living in a world that has a lot of distortion of the, the historic story, 
um, sometimes even Holocaust denial. And, and still anti-Semitism is on rise in this country. Well, I, was, I was going to ask you, well, OK, I was going to say more broadly, but you're, you're relatively new in post, relatively. Yes. Um, is there a level of anti-Semitism in the UK that has surprised you? Is, is it what you feared with the rest of Europe? How would you say there, Ambassador? Well, the truth is I was quite surprised because uh, I never experienced anti-Semitism on the streets of, you know, big European city like London and I experienced myself on last May. This was at the speech at the university, yes? No, the, the speech on the I'm university so was just last November but on May this was when, when I saw the convoys going in ah, on Finchley Road course, and all, right. all the Jewish yes. areas and, and shouting anti-Semite uh, messages. It was, it, was, it was for me something very shocking and first of all there are facts i mean the the community trust that is doing security the cst oh, yeah, and um, i need to declare an interest i do i do sit on a board there so just so everyone okay. knows that yes yeah, so, so yeah. i'm just saying that the, the statistics they collect unfortunately show rise of anti-semitism in, in large numbers and this is something we all it's like a mirror to our society and to say this is not just something that happened then in the past it's still so you were disappointed by the level in in the uk ambassador i think First of all, I need to say that the British government is doing its best to, to fight it, to make sure that people uh, will be taken to courts for, for committing hate crimes. But there are some things that um, I think are still very strange to me, and this is why I'm so um, happy that um, the, the Education Secretary is addressing problems yes. like anti-Semitism on campuses. The fact that some Jewish students don't feel secure when they go to get their academics, um, you know, the degrees. And this is something that, is, that in every free society, we need to make sure that people can go on campus and, and feel good about it. And, uh, and, and also there's a, a problem, as some would say about some of the reporting, you may be aware the BBC is in, under investigation over their reporting of an incident of a group of Jewish people who the BBC suggested uttered um, racial slurs to a group of Muslims who then attacked the Jewish people on the bus. The BBC have subsequently apologised, but are there concerns about some of the reporting here? I think the big, biggest problem is the events. I think the reporting, eventually, you don't hide the truth. And the truth is out there, and it's very clear that the Oxford case in Hanukkah, the last Jewish holiday, was definitely... An, an event that is a clear anti-Semitism. Um, I so, mean so Oxford Street, don't you? The Oxford it was, Street. It was Oxford Street. Street. Of that's course, right. No, yes. that's my job. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Of course. And and I think the bus on Oxford Street. That's the one. So, yeah. so I think I think that uh, it's very clear that those things are being published. I don't think you hide the truth, and and it's time it's time again to to speak about um, how we make it relevant to uh, yes. basically to the young people. I think yeah, many young people don't know the history. And, I, and that this is the main problem. And that leads me to my last point, because for many people, and you might have your views on that, but they get their history from the TV or the movies. Or the which social can be, media. Or the, which can be a good thing, yeah, it can be a bad thing. You might be aware there's a very famous movie, uh, movie a book, I'm sorry, and movie called The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, which tells the story of uh, a young boy, a, 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 a Jewish boy, makes friends with the son of a camp, the commandant of a camp. And there is now a concern using that in education, because I'm sorry to sort of spoil the punchline of the film for anybody, but the little German boy goes through the barbed wire, makes friends with the little Jewish boy, and you know what happens to him. He suffers the same fate. Yes. There is now a feeling that that actually should not be used in educational purposes because it engenders sympathy for the German side, for the son of the German commandant who climbs through the wire and ultimately gets, uh, gets killed. Should it be an educational tool, a book such as that? I, I didn't see the book, I didn't read it. It's not part of the Israeli curriculum. Um, and again, I think the discussion is not about a specific book. The, I think the only thing we need to remember is there is a massive disinformation, especially on the internet. Uh, oh, well, as in the Holocaust didn't exist or something such as that? Distortion of numbers, distortion of the horrors. And, and I think that it's good for us to remember that, first of all, we need to... Uh, I mean, not for young kids. For young kids, I think you need to have better educational tools to make it not traumatic because it's very difficult to access it to young kids. But when it comes to teenagers that are able to understand where hate can lead us, it's very, very important to really get back to the history. And, and, and I think this country, as a country that f had a glorious fight in the Nazi regime, should be maybe in the front line of education about where hate can, can take us 
and about resilience when you're fighting um, this whole regime. And, and I think the fact that some people are not proud of Churchill anymore, this is a very sad thing because you need to be proud in your legacy of fighting the Nazi regime and being maybe one of the, of the very few there that were part of the brave people that were willing to fight the, the I would say, the pure evil. And, and I think that this is part of the history of this country. You should be proud of it. And also the fact that many Jews were refugees in this country. Indeed. Very soon I'm going to visit the Jewish Museum. Ah, yes. I'm going to see the history of the Kins transport. Yes. All those kids that were saved by um, very generous people in this country that uh, gave them a shelter. Indeed. So altogether, I think, uh, those are like chapters in the history both of this country and uh, of the Jewish people. Okay. And the establishment of Israel altogether things that should be studied in a very clear way.